All right, guys, so we are back with our third episode. In this episode, I'm going to show you guys how to use uh, Nest.js to set up a post request. So uh, we're going to do it the Nest.js way. So you might probably have a good idea of how to do it already, but I'll show you how I'm going to do it, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to use the post request uh, decorator. So that's just post, and you can specify the path. Now, one more thing that I want to do, and this is, I actually did this uh, off off camera, but inside the main.ts file, I'm going to call uh, app.setGlobalPrefix and uh, provide this API prefix. What this will do is it will just prefix all of our routes with slash API. I recommend doing that because it's easier for you to set up your web server if you're using Nginx, for example. Um, and yeah, it's really, really, uh, really, really helpful. Okay, so now when we call it API, we're going to have to specify that we're going to have to prefix it with slash API. Anyways, so for the path, I'm just going to go ahead and call this, uh, uh, let's see, create. So when we call this endpoint, it's going to be slash API slash customers slash create. So I'm going to call this create customer. Now, if you obviously have used Express before, you'll know that we can actually get the request body. Uh, from the request object. And that's definitely true. So for example, if you wanted to use the uh, request decorator and if you wanted to uh, just simply reference rec.body, you can do that. Now, you won't get IntelliSense on the request body. You could create like an interface to type annotate that, okay? But there's actually a better way that we can handle uh, request payloads or request bodies in Nest.js. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use something called a DTO and DTO stands for data transfer object. Okay. And what a data transfer object is, you can think of it like a schema and uh, it defines how the data is going to be sent over the network. So network as in like from the, uh, from one place to another place. So if we're sending it from the client to the server, right, if we're sending it across the network, we want to ensure that this data that we're receiving matches this DTO. We want to make sure this is what the, that data represents. Okay. Now, one thing according to documentation is that uh, we can actually use classes to define our DTO schemas. Um, they also do mention that you can also use interfaces, but they discuss why they recommend classes primarily because classes are already part of the ES6 standard and they're preserved as real entities, okay? Uh, because in ES6, in, in like in ES6, uh, there's actually no interfaces, okay? Which makes sense, right? There's no, there, there are classes, but no interfaces, okay? Um, and so since the interfaces are removed during the translation, nest cannot refer to them at runtime, okay? Um, and so you might not really notice many problems, but uh, maybe until when you use things like pipes and stuff, uh, you might run into some problems with that. But like I said, we're going to use classes because that is what the, the documentation recommends and because of that sole reason as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a data transfer object. So what I'm going to do is I'll create a new folder called DTOs. And we can have many DTOs. We'll create one DTO for now. So we'll call this createCustomer.DTO.TS. And we'll just simply create a class called create customer DTO. Okay. And literally, this is just going to be a schema of how the request body is going to look like. So you're going to ask yourself, well, what is it that we're going to be sending over the network that will reach our server? Well, when you create a customer, think about what are the details that you need. You'll probably need an email address, right? So we'll do email and we'll type annotate that to be a string. Um, now, for now, just for this tutorial, I am actually going to, uh, I'm going to actually provide the ID as well, as well as, uh, I'm going to actually omit the date for a better property. Uh, so let me actually give her the date real quick. And we'll do, instead of email, we'll do something like a uh, name. So we'll do Danny, Danny. Okay. Adam. Adam. And uh, name Spencer Spencer, and we really should be creating an interface to type annotate our data just to be consistent. Okay, uh, so well, let me do this real quick. 
So I have my DTO. So like I said, the DTO should not look exactly, or it, it won't always look exactly like your actual model, like the actual record that might live in the database, because there might be other things in the DTO that you might need to determine how we should create the resource. Okay, so that's very important to know. Okay, uh, so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go back to this create customer uh, function and we're going to use our DTO. So the way we can use this DTO is we can use the body decorator. And this basically represents the request body. What this does is it literally extracts the entire body object from the request object and it'll just populate it. Okay, and it also give us, we can also uh, type annotate this as well. So I can call this create customer DTO, create customer DTO, type annotate like that. So now, if I were to reference create customer, wait, whoops, create customer DTO, you can see that I have the email ID and name over there with IntelliSense. Okay, let me go ahead and just simply console log this. And let's go ahead and go into Postman. So I already have a Postman, uh, I already have Postman set up already. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and pass the ID as well as the name. So we'll just do Anson Anson, and I'll send that over there. And you can see in the console, we should just have the, we should just have uh, all that stuff logged. Here we go. So cool, now we have our DTO. We can actually use this to uh, do whatever we want. We can use this to create the resource, use it to delete something, whatever it is that we want. Okay, so that's pretty awesome. So uh, typically what we could do is we can create a method on our service. So I can go into our customer service. And what I can do is I can say create customer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just say customer DTO customer ETOs like this. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say this dot users. Uh, and I think what we could do is we can actually, um, let me see. I should just be able to just push. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay. Awesome. So uh, let me go ahead and actually zoom out a little bit because I know it's a little bit hard to see everything. Uh, now, let me do one more thing. Uh, I, let me actually create... Um, let me actually create a folder called uh, types. Actually, let me do that inside customers. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this uh, customer.ts. And this will just be an interface. And this will just represent our customers. So ID number, email string name string like i said i could use the, the dto that we just created to annotate that but this is supposed to represent like our actual model it's just that we don't have any database set up yet uh we will set that up later in the tutorial okay but i don't want to uh i, I don't want to like, use the dto for that okay let's do private uh wait did i call this users it should be called customers so private customers type annotate that with customer it'll be a customer array uh, and we'll just rename this to customers. Oh, uh, yeah, customers. Okay. Now, since the DTO has overlap with the uh, with the customer, they're really just the same thing. It's just different names. It'll actually it won't throw, it won't give us like any linting error. Okay. So uh, so now that we have a route to create, let's go ahead and call this dot customer service dot create customer. We'll pass in the DTO. Okay, and uh, that's it. So by default, like I said, it'll return a 201. Okay, so um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. We don't have to worry about anything else. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and actually create one route that will actually give us all the users. So I'll create that right up here. So get, or I keep saying user, I mean customers, sorry. So get all customers. And what we'll do is we'll just return this stock customer service and we'll create a method called get customers. Uh, and we'll just create that right over here. So get customers and also literally just return just the customers like that. All right, so let's go ahead and test out our endpoint.
so everything is saved in memory right now. So um, let's go ahead and get the customers. So we have three customers. Okay, if I call post, we have a 201 created. And if I call that endpoint again, we should have our uh, fourth. Uh, we should have our fourth uh, user or customer in there. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, awesome. So one more thing that we actually have a problem with, and we'll address this in the next video. So I'm going to show you guys how we can actually perform validation. And this is why you'll want to use details. You'll never want to not use details after I show you guys what we're going to do. Well, right now, just to give you guys a sneak peek, if I actually don't provide the ID, uh, let me actually make a post request again. If I don't provide an ID, I can actually still make a make, make a post request. And you can see that it'll add that data to that array, but it, it's just missing ID. And this is obviously really bad because your data isn't consistent. So you have some records that does not have uh, like required properties. I'm going to show you in the next video how we can actually validate our, uh, our request bodies. And we can actually send a uh, 400 status code if the response or if the request payload or, or slash request body are, is invalid. So that's going to be pretty much it for this tutorial. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.